I think we are live now. Good evening to all our viewers out there. Hope everyone is fine and safe. After a very humorous and funny session with uh, Chris, today we are back with another interesting live session where we invite a new guest every week who share their real life experiences and also inspire us a lot. So, not wasting any further time, let's begin by inviting the one and only Sriyadi who is a psychotherapist and co-host with me for today's session. Yeah. Hi Shriya Di. Good evening Di. Good evening Di. How are you? Very young. I'm great. That's nice. That's nice. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. After the session of Chris's session, my face has also come to my face. And I'm also seeing the same face in your face. Yes, yes. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about grief, sadness and grief. लूजिंग संबंध उस उस बारे में बात कर रहे हैं तो दी मैं ये बोलना चाहूंगा कि ग्रीफ इज एन इनेविटेबल एंड इसके इनस्केपेबल पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ यू नो नो मैटर हाउ क्लोज समवन इज और हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग आर बॉन्ड इज विथ हिम वी इवेंचुअली टेंड टू लूज दम एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम और यू नो सम पॉइंट ऑफ लाइफ एंड दैट हिट्स अस वेरी हार्ड समटाइम्स टू द एक्सटेंट दैट वी कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्ट सो हाउ कैन वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी नीड टू गो to a professional for a help after losing someone. <clears throat> right. So, Pratik, uh, you know, when a person undergoes this pain for a prolonged period of time, for a time that the other is at that, so uh, at that point of time, you can understand that you may need a professional help. But then there are several other factors. This is one of the most common factors that we understand. Also, uh, when you go for grief counseling, there are various methods like existential therapy, individual therapy, group therapy, family therapy, right? So, how do you cope up? What are the different things? I think this uh, bare me, the person experienced hai, jo isme kafi logo se deal karte hai, unse sunenge to hum jada seekhenge. So uh, I would like you to introduce her, Prithi. Absolutely, Di. So I'm be very sure whatever you told is definitely correct. And uh, let's not waste any further time. And let's actually begin by inviting the founder of three organization, Miss Usha Narayan. Uh, I believe she's unable to join. Then. Just a sec. Yeah, I have invited her. I'm sure, Pratik, we are going to learn a lot today. Absolutely, and absolutely. Gain a lot of empathy. Definitely. Have you sent her the request? Yeah, she, she can't join yet. I'll send her once. Can you once. please uh, send the request? There is a send request option in the right hand side. Hey, yeah. yeah. Ma'am is here with us. Hello, ma'am. Hi, I was trying to join from my um, laptop, but I think uh, I was not able. To, I was not getting the, um, you know, getting the um, invite on the laptop. Let me just put my phone here so that I can sort of steady it and then uh, give me a second yeah. let me just sure no. take your time uh, all right so i wanted to be hands-free when i speak so let me that's why i thought the phone wasn't a great idea hey sorry about this just give me a minute no that's problem. okay ma'am that's okay take your time ma'am uh all right let's see if i can fix it on this All right, there. Perfect. All right, let's go. Good evening to all of you. And, good evening, uh, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hi, hi, good evening. 
Hope you are doing Thank well, ma'am. Thank you so much for doing, giving your valuable time and attending this session. Absolutely, my pleasure. Actually, it's absolute pleasure. I think this is the first time I'm going uh, live on Instagram. So I, you know, oh. for a lot of reasons, uh, yeah, this is like um, absolute pleasure for a lot of reasons. I'm sure many of our audience are going to learn a lot today from our live session Thank with you, you and Sulshi Adi. I am also. I hope so too. Definitely, ma'am. So without wasting any further time, can we begin our session? perfect okay ma'am so coming directly to our main my first question so you know uh, loss of some losing someone can be a b- very big push to someone's mental health especially so can you suggest some basic coping mechanisms for people who you know who cannot go out of grief and you know all those uh, bereavement therapy um so first and foremost grief and bereavement therapy is something which is very niche and it is available only to a very uh, small sector of um, uh, you know our society um, especially in india um, given the fact that counseling is not something that is looked upon as um, you know you don't look at mental health as something that needs to be treated um, especially grief i think uh, i don't know too many people who actually take the initiative to go for grief and bereavement uh, counseling or therapy uh, but having said that a lot of women actually find me you know means and ways to um, cope with grief and uh, from my personal experience i think i would say the top 3 uh, coping mechanisms uh, for grief uh, the first one would be to allow yourself to grieve you know to allow yourself to feel the emotions uh, to allow yourself to feel the pain because a lot of times um, a lot of us a lot of women are told to stay strong i think that's something which uh, a lot of us you know uh, say to people who've lost somebody oh you must stay strong and in the process of staying strong we forget the person who's grieving forgets to um, emote forgets to express grief in the form of emotions now emotions could actually range from anger to sadness to pain to numbness so i think it is very important first thing to express yourself because expressing grief is a part of you know healing and getting over the grief uh the second thing um which is my i think my top second would be um exercise physical exercise um any kind of exercise it could be a 30 minute walk in the morning it could be yoga it could be anything it could be gymming if you are into gymming if you were into gymming before you lost your loved one um those who you know who've been in the gym try punching a bag for 15 minutes you'll know how you can actually vent out your emotions how you can actually yeah. express your emotions and what happens is any kind of physical exercise allows you to vent out your emotions and hence calm your mind so i think every day any kind of physical exercise is definitely a must um the third thing i would say is your routine get back to your routine because um you know getting back to any kind of routine i think all of us know it's not necessarily just uh, you know for grief therapy but getting back to a routine or having a routine helps you have some kind of structure um, you know during your day and also it allows you to go back to something that you're very comfortable it could be as simple as waking up in the morning and making your chai making your chai is an activity is a comfort activity that allows you to heal because you're going back to something that you sort of relate to you know it could be dropping your kids to the bus stop it could be going back to work and meeting your work colleagues all these things are these these things are i think um uh, they're very small things they're routine stuff but they actually help a lot in calming your mind because your mind your brain and your heart suddenly goes back to something that is comforting that you know comforting and warm so i think routine is the third top 3 um of course um i think the most important actually something which sits on all of these is to find a support system um a support system which will just listen to you uh, a support system which does not tell you what to do what not to do a support system which can just just listen to you without giving you solutions and answers nobody has solutions nobody has answers to these questions nobody can you know so 
a support system which does not judge you or criticize you i think that's very important because like i said emotions vary from anger to sadness there are days when you are irritated there are days when you are angry you want the support system to just listen to it and dissipate your emotions i think that really helps and i think that's that goes for um, mental health also i mean in mental health in every form so i think these are the top 3 or 4 um, i think coping mechanisms that i i would uh, it worked for me definitely um the other things uh, you know small things like bringing in some humor into your life there's nothing wrong in laughing um picking up a hobby maybe something creative i think these are smaller things but again they you know they channelize your energy so yes yeah. so these are the top 5 4 or 5 coping mechanisms according to me wow that's amazing i think yeah it uh, applies to most of the mental health problems um and i think you have covered most of the things that we need to deal listening is uh, an art and yeah we all when we are going through our low phases we all have our setbacks and we need someone who can just listen to in a non judgmental attitude so that is very very important apart from this there is a certain conventional idea attached to the idea of grief so uh, where one has to portray it to the world in order to feel the grief right so otherwise there is a certain fear also of being judged coming back to that point there is a fear of being judged where as and when we say that okay i want to talk about this then immediately you have another thought coming up oh my god what will that person think about me? if i share this what will happen yes. will they feel bad will they not be the same as they were before yes so could you you know tell us about that since you are very experienced in that field so i think that this is this is a very uh, uh, you know this is something that me and my family and friends have discussed a lot of times um it all goes back to social conditioning subconsciously our mind knows that when you lost somebody we have seen people behave in a certain way and we emulate it we think that is the right way to behave but everybody has their own journey everybody has their own way of portrayal of grief we forget what works for us we try to emulate what possibly worked for others so i think that is the first wrong thing and that comes that stems from socially the mind being conditioned to follow a particular set of guidelines so you know when when i lost my husband i think the first 3 4 days there were a lot of people at home i had my family over uh, my friends were there and at times when people would drop in they would see they would hear a lot of mm-hmm. laughter they would pe- they would see people laughing and that sort of you know that sort of we we you know amongst mm-hmm. us we would say that possibly it's putting them they, they don't know how to react to it so please i th- think it's very important to know that it is your journey it is your grief nobody can tell you how to portray that grief nobody can tell you how to express that grief in my last two or three years of um, you know reaching out to women i have heard women who have wanted to do something within the first month or two of having lost their spouses having lost their husbands but they did not do it because they thought what will everyone say i mean let it go let and an, after another two three months as simple as indulging in going out and buying something for yourself i think why should anybody say anything but that's how our society is we judge people and we criticize people on everything that they do so i think it's very important to leave that judgment to them if people are judging you let them judge you their judgment is their problem do not make it your problem if you bring it into if you're going to bring that judgment into your life then that becomes your problem if anybody says that oh my god look at her she's just lost her husband and she's out having coffee with her friend it's just too bad i mean that's your problem you're thinking like that but if that gives me some kind of solace to meet a friend to have a cup of coffee with someone to maybe go and buy something i think we should do it do not stick to any particular norm that this is how grief should be i think um i'm going back to my family i think my family is a perfect example of how to let the person grieve nobody told me how to grieve nobody told me what was right or what was wrong and in that way i think i was very still am very privileged i took my decisions i took decisions for my children for my life 
nobody questioned me on those decisions i i acted in a way which i thought was appropriate i celebrated birthdays i celebrated all the festivals in the first year which is technically the grieving you know period in our uh, hindu society we um, you know we we grieve for one year and also a lot of other religions um however i just went ahead and celebrated there were people uh, my friends uh, i remember my colleagues who said oh but this doesn't happen in our family i mean we don't do that i told them but that's how it happens in my house i celebrate whatever life has to offer if i want to do something i will do it do not allow anybody to tell you how you have to grieve everybody's journey is different so i think period don't allow anybody if somebody is judging you that's their problem don't bring that judgment into your life then it becomes your problem let them judge okay. absolutely ma'am it's true and you know being close to family and you know stay spending time with them and and at the end of the day they are the one who care for you so i think that's the best way to deal with grief so you know coming to your organization three so could yeah. you tell us more about your organization three and uh, you know what motivated you to you know how do you see the organization grow super so um so the first part can you repeat the first part of the question yeah could you tell us about three like what motivated you to you know come up with right. an organization right. three right three the cause behind three is one of my i think it's a cause which is very close to my heart uh, because it's my journey uh it's my journey the last seven and a half years and like i just said i have been very very privileged and i say the word privileged because it was just handed over to me just because i was a part of a family i am a part of a family and i am a part of a particular set of friends you know so this privilege was handed over to me i they helped me grieve they did not judge me they were the support that i needed to propel myself you know towards now what happens is when you lose your spouse it's a very life changing i mean it's cliche but it is life changing you know you you, you know you, you particular you have to course correct when something like this happens because uh, a lot of things you lose a lot of things you lose some some women lose the earning member of their family some women lose their best friend some women lose their lover some women have lost the um, social support or the support which you know was required to lead their life so you know lot of ways they lose a lot women do lose a lot you know some women lose their identities because their identity is revolving around their husbands and it's okay i mean it's i'm i'm saying when i say identity it's okay if you're a working professional if you're working in a you know in a, in the corporate world you still have your identity you could still have your identity associated with your husband so what happens is when you lose this you need to have some kind of a support which helps you to course correct uh, not course correct but change course you know this particular course is not going to work so you have to change course and you know it's like rail gaadi ek patri pe chal rahi thi ab wo ludak gayi hai to dusre patri pe chalana padega na varna the train is going to derail so i think i had a lot of support i had a lot of um, uh, you know non judgmental um especially for emotional resurrection um not many women how many women uh, shreya in your uh, uh, you know in your uh, profession as a counselor as a mental health counselor how many women actually come and tell you that i lost my husband and i miss my husband women don't say that but i had the privilege of saying this to my support family my support system i had the privilege of um you know uh, being vulnerable in front of people i think we need to identify those one or two people uh, you know in front of whom we can be vulnerable moot and you can get through your you know your, your healing process so i think that was a privilege and i just want to extend this privilege to other women um that's the motivation behind street uh, i i'm forgetting your second part of the question if you can repeat that yeah so how do you see the organization grow 
Okay, so if you have seen the um, the uh, logo of Stri, a uh, very dear friend helped me, um, you know, uh, create this logo. So if you see the logo, it's it's so my idea behind my, the way I want to see this organization grow is um, a support system, a, a a system of women coming together, helping this other woman who is trying to grieve and break the glass ceiling, you know, to live her life successfully and with a lot of contentment i know it's too much to ask successful um, life content possible so i think that is the way i see this organization grow it is it, it, more than an organization i think it's a support system it's a social support system uh, it is it is for women to come together and support other women uh, who are undergoing this kind of grief so that is what three is all about and i'm sure it's going to do wonders all the best for your organization thank you thank you also I'd like to say that thing to get in touch with her you can get in touch with herself as well because we are working together as a collaboration right now you can find her details in our website as well so uh moving on to the next question i would like to uh Uh, ask you this thing like everyone goes through the specific rough patch especially when dealing with grief and uh, you have shared a bit of it would you like to discuss more about your rough patch and how you dealt with it we know that uh, you have dealt uh, the most important factor that has been in your life is your sub- support system the non judgmental support system so could you throw some more light and uh, we would also like to know if grief can act as a great barrier to our physical health um okay so let me address the first part of your question the rough patch in um, you know my healing process yes there were rough patches um, and rough patches are bound to be um, so so um, my rough patch would be uh, the fact that i was dealing with my grief and i also had two children uh, who were having their own you know journey of grief uh, they have a totally different story to tell as a kid i did not lose a parent but they lost a parent so their story is different their grief is different their journey is different and i had to ensure that they were on the right path you know they healed and they came out of it and i also had to heal uh, alongside so i think that was um, that of course i had a lot of support um uh, uh, you know it who helped me tide over this uh, and i think um, uh, my kids um, i always feel they're very strong uh, uh, because of the life you know because of the certain incidents that happened in their life like one of them is losing a parent um so yes that was rough the other thing um, which was rough and i did struggle for a while uh, is um, like i said losing your identity so when you're in a marriage you know uh, when you're in a marriage you share just about everything and a successful marriage even more you know you share you share your love you share your vast you share just about everything your food and your daily life everything so what you what you lost is so marriage is like a partnership so here you've lost a partner it's like a it's like teamwork so you lose a partner you lose the identity around which your identity revolved it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman you know when you lose your spouse a part of your identity is snatched away too that's a loss of identity as well so i think i grappled um, for quite a bit in trying to find my footing in trying to find what is it that i wanted to do in trying to I did struggle with that.
grief actually has a lot of there are a lot of symptoms so loss of weight loss of appetite uh, hair loss uh, i i know that women have had skin rashes um you know loss of sleep these are the visible physiological changes that you see when you are grieving you know you you see uh, it, you might be eating well you know still you lose weight you might be uh, wanting to sleep but your mind is not sleepy your body might be exhausted sometimes the mind is not sleepy so you're not able to sleep so these are the kind of things yes it does affect you but i think it's important to ensure that you're you know you you do engage in some kind of physical activity every day because you need to keep sure, you know you need to make sure that you're giving the right nutrition and the right supply to your body nutrition um, ensure you eat a good meal whether you like it or not maybe three meals a day i think that's important um i think it takes around 5 to 6 months sometime 8 months to get over this these are just symptoms of what your uh, you know grief is a so if i go back to what grief is grief is your body's mind body hearts upheaval um when you lost someone so the mind is you know mind is in a turmoil and that shows in your body right it shows as symptoms so it could be hair loss it could be pimples it could be any kind of changes um however i think the best way to tackle i don't think medications uh, help uh, you know you might take medications for pimples but they're going to come back because there's something else which is at work uh, so i think it's important to ensure that your mind becomes better and then subsequently your body also becomes better and these symptoms vanish correct i agree these are the psychosomatic changes that we see and uh, it is a uh, thing so sometimes we think that we have taken up so many medications uh, we have shown to so many doctors i don't know why this is coming up and instead of acknowledging your own emotions and thoughts that is affecting you we tend to go run away from our thoughts this is basically a way of denial also so that's my next question that i would like to ask since we uh, follow the five stages of grief model mostly we see that uh, we have denial then anger then we bargain then depression then acceptance so uh, i think uh, first part denial a lot of people uh, especially when they lose their loved ones they are either stuck in the denial phase or in the fifth phase that is the acceptance phase so if they are stuck in the first phase denial phase uh, what would you suggest them all right so like you said grief is a process so there is you would not be stuck in one phase believe me you do move on to the next phase and uh, fortunately or unfortunately time is a healer time heals and you move on to the next phase and you know th these five stages are not concrete some people may not have anger some people may not have depression so i think these are the uh, this is these are five stages but you may or may not the first four stages you could jump on to any stage you know right in the beginning um, however acceptance i think is the last stage and acceptance i don't know what you mean when you say stuck but acceptance is the is the stage which helps you move forward so if we go back to what denial is i think denial is basically when you you know so if i were to go back to my experiences i would have dreams of you know my life before my husband died so i i would want back i i would want to go back to my dreams i it's like you don't want to believe what is going on you know it is it is uh, of course you know in your mind what has happened however you still dream about or you know whether you're awake or you're sleeping you still think of the life which was before the death of your loved one so i think that's and a lot of people say that i feel numb that's because you're not reacting you you're not reacting to the uh, to the incident that has happened in your life you're stopped and you're not reacting and that's denial according to me i think most of us go through that um the anger and the, uh, the anger yes I, i think at some point or the other everybody is angry why did this happen to me and i think anger is you just have to every part every stage of grief i think you have to um go through it you have to um you know you have to it's a journey you have to go from start to finish and get over that phase 
anger, you know, when you're, and, and a lot of times we take out anger on our support system. And hence I said, it's very important to have a support system, which does not judge you. It does not judge you on what you said, what you did. You will be irritable. You'll be angry at something which seems very, um, uh, you know, minuscule. It, it, it's like, you know, the coffee being hot or the coffee being cold. I think that's, nobody gets angry with these things, but you just find a reason to be angry at. So I think, the moment the moment you it comes out i think it sort of dissipates so i think it's important to express i think i you know i'd like to go back to what i said in the beginning very important to express you know a lot of women do not have the privilege of sitting down and you know allowing the emotions to come out they have to get back to work because they have to put food on the table so i think very important for anyone who has a job to go back to take a half an hour or an hour you know out of your day and just sit down and just you know let your emotions come out when i lost my husband there was this lady who had lost her husband to a couple of years ago she came to me and she told me lock yourself in a room once in a day and scream out aloud you will let out you will vent it out and you will you know the, the emotions will come out so anyway whatever that works for you whatever works for you i think it's important to let the anger dissipate bargaining I think we all do that. I wish you would come back. I will not do this. I will not do this. But it's not going to happen. And you soon, I think that's a very short phase, believe me. And I think this bargaining phase sort of comes, keeps coming uh, in the first four phases at a lot of, you know, a lot of times. It's not like just a phase, you know, bargaining. You keep telling yourself, you keep asking people, you keep asking, uh, you know, God or universe. I just hope he comes back. I just hope she comes back. I will never do this. I will never do this. So I think that's, that's the bargaining we're talking about. I would also like to add, um, there are these phases of guilt. Uh, so I know women who suddenly when you're eating ice cream, uh, you know, you stop and say, oh my God, I'm eating ice cream and he's not even there with me. I think that's also a part of, uh, you know, a part this guilt, a little bit, a minor, or should I say a minuscule amount of guilt is also a part of um, um, uh, grief. Um Depression. Now, I think depression is a totally different um, ball game. Um, uh, I'm sure you know it. Yes, depression is could be a part of grief, but depression is always not a part of grief. So depression, the symptoms are very, uh, very extreme, you know, um, uh, loss of appetite, extreme loss of appetite, extreme amount of guilt, extreme amount of self-pity, you know, extreme amount of when you're just not interested in going back to your work to your routine you have no interest in doing something at all so i think that is those are the signs um, of depression um uh, you can add uh, you know more points the last one is um, acceptance and i think um, that's an amazing phase to be in um, when i say amazing because you've been through these four or five stages and when you actually so act i've been told by people oh you haven't gotten over it I won't tell them I'll never get over it. I have been told by people that you'll not, you haven't gotten over it, but why should I get over it? Why should I get over something that changed my life? You know, so grief is, uh, sorry, acceptance is, I think, um, when you, when you can, when you can talk about the incident without feeling pain in your heart, when you can take out the good memories and, not really think about the sad or the bad memories associated with that person. I think that is acceptance. And that sort of gives an upward tilt to your life. You, you, you sort of propel yourselves to a life which is going to be different, uh, which is going to be different because you don't have that part now with you. Okay. I agree with you. <clears throat> it is also uh, where the file the belief system file comes up from so you have the event in your mind but the emotion is detached and that is the acceptance state yes 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 uh well i wouldn't uh, you know emotions detached um is it really possible no but you don't feel the pain all times there might be times when you feel the pain but at all times you do not feel sadness you do not feel a heaviness in your heart you know you can actually talk about it you can laugh about it you can talk about the good things and just move on, you know, move on to the next topic or it doesn't hold you back. We were just waiting for questions from the audience and there is right one here with us. So yeah. Ashbin asks, uh, does anger exist in the whole process of grief and uh, how does one come outside of it? 
right so anger yes anger is a part of grief because you are angry that see first and foremost uh, i think the one thing which you have no control over is death you cannot control it and hence the anger is more because you could do nothing about it you know so i think anger is yes it is a part of grief um some people have a lot of anger some people don't have as much so every everybody's grief journey is different and it is very important to dissipate that anger because anger itself is not a great emotion to live with so i think like i said let express your anger express your emotions express your anger with people who are not going to judge you people who are very close to you and i think it's important to have the support system if possible staying with you for the first 6 to 8 months of your grief you know you know first to six, first 6 6 to 8 months of having just lost your loved one uh, because it allows you and when you express anger about the same thing again and again and again after a month or a month and a half you're not angry about it anymore you actually move on to the next phase you you will see that anger sort of subsides because you're ready you've been angry enough and in your mind you know that you don't have an answer and you're ready to move to the next phase so the only way to get over it is to express it to dissipate it find ways and means if running helps you dissipate it go run if walking for 2 hours helps you go walk if talking to people helps you talk to people so do what you want but you should vent out what is there inside you yes. to understand yourself better yes yes absolutely great so is there any other question from the viewers because uh, i think she has covered most part of it and a lot of people must have been motivated till now okay we have another question brushbin was asked again can such grief turn into hatred for self uh hatred for self uh hatred for the society i think these are two different things so when hatred for self if if you start hating yourself i think you or if you find someone in your circle who is dealing with grief and hates themselves please ensure that they get to a counselor uh that they you know in spite of having a social support system in spite of having family around you if you're not able to get over the, the get over the hatred or the anger or rather get over the anger anger and it becomes hatred ensure that you get them to a doctor or if it's yourself please go and meet a doctor sometimes simple medications help um those are extreme cases when these kind of the, the anger turns to hatred towards self sometimes towards the society in both cases i think it is very important imperative that if any one of you in your circles know anybody like that get them to a doctor very simple medications help um uh, you know simple medications taken daily over a course of 4 to 6 months help in getting over these kind of emotions that was really nicely explained ma'am any other questions I'm happy to answer i think we had one question in the very beginning so mm -hmm. let me check if i can get back to it how to get rid of overthinking oh well you can't get rid of overthinking believe me uh, uh it's it's the human mind thinks the human mind loves to overthink so one way of um getting rid i can't say getting rid but staying away from overthinking is to again get back to your routine get back to your job uh find something meaningful find an identity keep your mind give your mind time to grieve but also don't give it too much time find something um go paint do something which actually channelizes your energies channelizes your uh, thought process into something else i think it's very meditative if you can uh do something for half an hour during a day without thinking about anything else i think that's what meditation is where you channelize all your thoughts into one single you know entity single thing right so i think the best way to not overthink i think most people overthink you don't have to be really a grieving to overthink a lot of people overthink um and uh, i think the best way to overthink a uh, best way to get over th overthinking is to find something which will give vent to your creativity 
find something which will exhaust you physically go walk for 2 hours you'll stop overthinking believe me it will calm your mind because it you, you know you spent out you vented out your energy and it calms your mind absolutely when we are preoccupied with something else definitely we you know we don't overthink and uh, yeah that is true so there's one more question i want to it, i would like to say yes uh, that if you are overthinking then very in very short line maybe channelize your energy into some different activities whatever you said again uh, so it is in sync with that but it is very important to think you know to channelize your energy right so overthinking is definitely a part of our life so whatever we do a lot of thoughts are going to come in try and focus all your energy all your thoughts on your own emotions on your own self what are you feeling what is coming up that will help you become more and more self aware and you know you will come into that meditative space absolutely yeah pratik yeah there's one more question coming up from audience uh, they asked did any books or films help you heal uh not really uh, but if help it helps you then i think you should go ahead and read uh at, i think at that time i was not in the you know i didn't have that kind of mental strength to uh read a book or the or the patience rather to read a book or sit through a movie um however what really helped me was instances from my own real life you know i think those helped me more uh but if books help you go pick up a book uh if you are somebody who reads voraciously um go pick up a book it might help you um if watching movies gives a vent out to your emotions go watch movies i mean i think it's movies are amazing if can you believe it you have this entire life thing happening in front of you for 3 hours for 2 hours so i think movies are amazing if it give if it sort of calms your mind if it sort of gives you some kind of entertainment go ahead and do it whatever works for you like i said everybody's process is different you like to cook go cook for the whole neighborhood tell people i'm going to give you food for the next one week whatever works for you <laughs> that's true man everything works differently for there different are people. so many people telling that you are such an uh, inspirational woman i am i am actually very much inspired by you today even me man i mean you are really inspirational to whatever journey you've got, gone through you feel so far what i really loved apart from all the knowledge that you shared is you know the fact that you again and again spoke about that it is your own journey yes so you respect each and every one's journey yes. so that is very rare and i really love that about you that thank you are you so respecting much. each and every person's journey thank you so much thank you thank you you definitely yeah, set an I example ma'am Oh, thank you definitely you so set an example thank which is going to inspire a lot of our audience and uh, they're going to learn a lot from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it is going to help a lot of people, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I feel there are no more questions or uh... Yeah, I think uh would you like to say something? Uh me? um well uh you know what um i think it is possible to have a life which is very satisfying uh, it is possible to have a life which is brilliant uh, it is possible to have a life which is adventurous successful and um you know content uh even after losing someone so you would if 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 you just lost i think especially the this this pandemic and the second wave um i have actually spoken to a lot of women who lost their husbands to covid and um the first thing that comes to their mind is how am i going to live my life i also thought of that question so many times and i didn't have an answer how am i going to live my life without my husband so i think do not try to think 6 months into the future think about one day and really think about one day at a time what are we what am i going to do to tide over today tomorrow is another story what am i going to do to tide over today is the question that you need to answer believe me anybody who is going through grief or anybody who has people in their circles who are going through grief or are grieving it gets better believe me time is a healer time unfortunately heals i mean 
I don't know whether to be thankful or not, but time heals. You will get over this. You know, it is, it is bound to happen. So just let the emotions flow through you. Do not judge yourself. Never tell yourself, I have to be strong and hence I cannot cry. I have to be strong and hence I cannot express myself. Do what it takes to get through that day. One day at a time is, has to be your mantra. Don't look into the future. Believe me, you will have a brilliant life. It is possible to have a very, very good life even after you've lost your very loved ones, be it your spouse or anybody else in the family. So allow yourself to grieve. You will get over it. There's something for you, I guess. Ma'am, no one can understand the grief in this true. And when wife dies, man does change his costume. But when husband dies, women are asked to break bangles and many more. Think this should be stopped. Yes. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, Unfortunately, I think, you know, it will take some, take me a while to actually, why do, why are women asked to change their appearance after your, you know, your husband dies? Uh, why is it that you have to change your lifestyle? It goes back to our, the value system of the society. Uh, it does not happen so much in other societies, but it does happen in the Indian society. Uh, luckily, nowadays, it's not as prevalent um, in the urban sectors, the rural areas, it's still there. Of course, even in the urban sectors, you'll be surprised there are women who are asked to not do a few things because they've lost their husbands. You know, what happens is a lot of times you don't know how to deal with a widow, especially a widow who's very young, you know, in her 20s or her 30s. What you do is you just shut her in a closet and you say, OK, now I've dealt with it. Now, how do you shut her in a closet? You tell her what to do because that is what you've seen in the last so many years, which has been done. You just shut her in a closet and you forget about it. And you tell her, listen, don't do this, don't do this and start doing this. You think you've dealt with your problem. Actually, you haven't. And I think this is the kind of change that we need to bring in our, uh, in our, in our society. And well, I'm very... Uh, I'm using the word privileged again and again because very privileged to come from a family which does not believe in any of these rituals. I could take my life decisions, very important life decisions without, I do what I want to do. I have people in my family who said, go live your life. You know, I think that's, that's very rare. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think that's that's an absolute privilege, and that is what I'm trying to extend here. But yes, uh, whoever said that, it is a very sad, sad uh, custom that we follow. And I'm hoping that with our generation, and definitely the generation that is coming next, we stop these kind of insane, uh, uh, silly, uh, stupid, and senile practices, which have no meaning in today's society. They have no meaning in today's society. So. Uh, be the change that you want to see. So if you see that in your peripherals, if you see that happening around you, stop it. That was the best description of the practices you said, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's definitely stupid. Yes, it is. It is. I, I think so. I absolutely think so. Uh, so, yeah. The question. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. There, but if there are, you can definitely get in touch with the lady uh, through us. Also, you can visit her website also, three um, right? Yeah, and or you could follow three dot twenty twenty on Instagram, or you could visit uh, three dot rocks. Um, that's how I'm trying to create this support system of women um, who who stand as a support to everyone who is going through grief. Awesome. Thank think... you so much, Shriya. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here mm -hmm. and giving your valuable time. Thank, Thank you. So you. We are really inspired. Thank That's you. Definitely. You are an amazing yeah. woman and you're doing a great job. Thank you for your definitely. kind words. A lot really. of appreciation for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a ton. Um, I will um, catch you sometime later, Shriya. And uh, looking forward Absolutely. to the lab. Thank you so much. I, Thank you. I Good think uh, we can end this session now here. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.